All right, so we're gonna tune up Mr. Bardwell's quad right here. But the first thing we're gonna do is fly it on the settings he had, which honestly, taking a glance at them, they look pretty good. So I don't know, you know, how much we're gonna be able to beat that, but let's see what we get. Let's see what it looks like. The first thing I wanna do is fly it on that, see how it goes. And I also wanna get a black box of the noise performance just to see you know how noisy this thing is and where can i go with the filters is it a little too aggressive just you know just to get a feel for it i did make some minor tweaks you can see i have a session five on it he usually flies a session he has a different gopro mount and then i put on a second battery strap come on joshua what's going on i only had one battery strap on there i thought you were a two battery strap kind of guy anyways hopefully those won't make that much of an impact from his flights to this one but let's see how it is and uh, of course, we're going to be taking it safe here and trying to fly it over this plowed parking lot because I know he doesn't do conformal coating as a man that lives in the south. And we don't have the, that great experience, but we do get to ski a lot and snow tube with the kids and stuff like that. So it is still fun here in the winter wonderland. All right, well, let's get into it. Engines armed. A little blurry there, buddy. I don't know if that's... Uh, if the camera's out of focus a little bit, but hey... I don't need to be that in focus. This soft's nice. So I'm just doing some checks here. I, you know, part of this is just getting a feel for the quad too. Plus it's my first flight with gloves on this year. And really the big thing I want to make sure is nothing weird happens. desyncs, things like that. Oh, that's good. Man, this is blurry though. Whew. I don't know if that's just the concern. Here's in my eyesight. So really to get see quite a bit of horizontal lines. Really to get a sense for the uh, noise, you can just do punch outs. Seen some horizontal lines, but that's all right. I don't hear any, hear any bad. Handle and prop wash pretty well. Yeah. What we got on here is HQ 5x4.3 props. So pretty, pretty standard stuff that clears. Yeah, handles wash pretty good. Well, he has the sliders at too, so it should be. This tune's pretty good, so uh, I don't know how much we're gonna be able to improve on this, buddy. Um, I think it's one of those things too, like I showed before, when you have a good mechanical quad, it's gonna be hard to improve upon it. The defaults are pretty good. Now we do have some uh, tweaks to the pig. I'm just doing some step moves there. See if we get any overshoots. I don't see any overshoots. Well, it's pretty good. All right, I only got two packs, so let's bring this in. I want to plug it in, see what some of the step responses look like, and then you know, we'll go from there. See if I can even land it right here on this macadam. Engines there disarmed. we go. Okay, so what we can do is go into beta flight and do the MSC connection so that I have a drive letter, of course, for the flash, which then I can have the logs here. Typically what I'll do if I'm in the field is I'll just go ahead and open this app and just take a look and let's see what it looks like. Oh, it looks very good for raw noise performance. Very, very good. So you can see very little, you know, you got these red squiggly lines. That's the raw pre-filtered gyro noise. And then you can also look down here at the D-term and you can see that the D-term you know, it has some vibration in it, but it's not nearly that, not nearly bad. I mean, some quads look a lot worse. 
can see some stuff going on here though. Yeah, well, let's take a look at that. Maybe that's a way to, a spot we can optimize the tune. The green line is the uh, sticks. So you can see when I enter into this roll move, it, the pitch axis wobbles quite a bit. So I'll take a look at that. And uh, yeah, so let's look at the spectrograph on these. So to do that, we just hit the bar here in the legend and you can see this is the raw noise. And if you see anything like this, that's good raw noise performance. You wanna see this, this big peak up here and then you wanna see this big trough. And if you hold down the shift key, you can get the frequency range. So you can see anywhere below, you know, 150 Hertz. Well, actually for a five inch quad, you're looking at anything, you can see 200 Hertz here. So at 150 Hertz and below, you should have this trough here. We don't really see too much. You might see some vibrations up here from uh, 30 to 60 Hertz if you're doing a lot of prop wash turns, because that's generally the frequency of prop wash. But in here, this should all be really low. And then this is the motor noise up through here. This is the motor band. So again, this is raw, pre-filtered. So that's roll. Let's look at pitch. The next thing I normally do is I just go down to the D-term traces here on my trace setup zero. Kind of look at that, make sure it's flowing through. You know, it's going to amplify some of the noise uh, in this area, but uh, you can see it's it's still tamed down pretty good. Uh, if we wouldn't have D-term filtering and stuff, this would be mega huge uh, with the amount of noise here, but the filtering is doing a good job. And we have really minimum filtering on this quad, so yeah. So from here, normally what I'll do is I'll unplug the quad, and I'll plug it back in, and that resets the MSP, and then I can just connect to Betaflight, right? I don't need to, the log, once it's open, it can just stay open. It doesn't need to keep reading the SD card. So what I'll do is go ahead and flash out the SD card so it's empty. And at this point, we are done with looking at the noise. So whenever you're looking at noise, you want to be on two kilohertz sampling rates just so you can see that full spectrum. However, we only have eight megs of flash on this thing. And for PID tuning, I only really need a thousand. So I'm going to go ahead and set that to a thousand now save and reboot and then we are off to the races the next thing i'm going to do is come over to my pids and i'm going to go to filters and since jb has this set uh, so aggressively and it's doing so well i'm going to just try a little bit of a different approach i'm going to go with my no gyro low pass filters set up here oh first thing i want to do actually i want to come back i want to go into the tuning and i want to set this to pid profile three and then I want to go to filters. I'm gonna go ahead and turn these off. So I have no filters on the low pass on the gyro itself. And I'm then as a result, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take it to 1.5 for now and just see what that does. That's gonna give me a little bit less uh, delay on the gyro signal for like the P term and I term and things of that nature. Not that the I term really matters all that much, but then it's going to have uh, a little bit more delay on the D-term. Let's see what we get with that, with the no gyro low pass filters. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my uh, RPM harmonics down. I didn't see any clear signs when I'm looking over here. I didn't see any clear signs of like noise up in this range. So the harmonics is wherever the RPM filters are placed for the first uh, so if the RPM filters are following the motor noise within this band, the second harmonic, or when it's set to two, that would put, that would take wherever the RPM filter is. It's going to range based on wherever the RPMs are here, but it's going to put another set of notches at two times that. And when it's at three, it's going to put another set of notches at three times that. And I really just don't see anything up here. On larger quads, you'll get stuff up here, uh, and even the, the micros, but typically in a five inch, you don't. I do see a little bit of stuff up here. Where the second harmonic can help is if you are down at zero throttle down here. So the RPMs will be, you know, the notches will sit at the minimum, right? So it would sit whatever this minimum is, 125. So at 250, when you have harmonic set to two, they'll put a set of notches at 250. So it'd be right in this area, right here, 250, right there. So when I'm at zero throttle, I'm gonna have the first harmonic of notches or the fundamental frequency of notches at 125. So they'll be sitting here just kind of idling because the motor RPMs will be down farther. And then the second would be here at 250 and kind of sitting. And if there's any 
uh, second harmonics and stuff, it will crush that out. It just helps with the filtering in general since this is right in the middle of the motor band. We're gonna do that. I could make that a more aggressive E1, but you don't save that much. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this up to 125 as well. So I don't want my dynamic notch to go so low, again, at zero throttle, because a lot of times when you're ramping up from zero throttle, uh, you know, like a 180 prop wash turn, those notches are all going to be sitting down at these minimums at the beginning of the ramp up of throttle. So I don't want them to go so low because obviously they delay a lot. So we'll just set that. And again, I don't really need these that low because when you come back to here, you don't really see anything, even 125. So that's right here. You can see there's really nothing in this area. So I could even be a little bit more aggressive with those and set those at 150. In fact, I think I am going to go do that. The default for beta flight for these, I believe, is 150. So I'm going to go ahead and set that at 150. And leave that at that. And I'm going to let the dynamic notch go a little lower if it needs to. And play a little cleanup duty there. Going over to the filters, what I did here is I did take a look at this a little earlier. And I, I want to push it. So if we go and we look and save, and I go back to what Mr. Bardwell had. You know, he had the D-min turned off. He had the D gains around 36 and 40. That's pretty good. Uh, I did slide up the master one notch. See, it's at 1.1. PD balance one notch. I uh, left PD gain at one and then just had your. So I'm going to just take a little bit of a different twist on this. But you saw that, you know, that was pretty good. So, uh, you know, nothing wrong with that tune. But some of this is, I gotta do something different, right? I can't, this video can't just be in, you know, this collaboration can't just be, hey, Josh, well, good job. <laughs> just laid it at that. So let's just try something a little different. I'm gonna leave the master at one. I'm gonna bring down this 0.9 to 0.9 here. And uh, I'm gonna set the P and D gain slider. So this is in the 50s for the D term. Again, D min off, this, all this stuff is the same here. I'm also gonna bring down the stick response down to, all the way for now and set transition to one to negate feed forward as much as I can, but still keep the sliders active. And one thing I still wanted to look at, so now we're kind of done looking at the noise. I did do a bunch of those step moves, so let's take a look at that. So here I'm gonna switch over to screen setup number four, trace template setup number four, and look at some of these step moves. Here I typically like to turn expo off. And you can see kind of this step move and see if we see any overshoots. I mean, we didn't see any overshoots on the, uh, you know, any bounce back during flight, but that's semi-normal. It's very fast and hard to see. So just gonna look around, see what these kind of look like. That looks pretty good. Uh, so we're gonna be reducing that down. He had 1.1, the P and D gain. We're gonna be juicing that to 0.9. So we're gonna get a little bit more P term, which should help with prop wash and all kinds of stuff. But I really think this quad's gonna be settled anywhere from 0.9 to 1.1. I think right in this range for this slider is where this guy's gonna to wanna to be just based on looking at this. You know, you can see this is coming up. There's a little bit of over dampening right there. So maybe this can come up sharper and just rest right there. Uh, and that's really where we're looking at the kick in. That's where your tail is the most, more than the kick out. So that's into the move. Let's look at the, if I can find anything. Ooh, this one looks pretty good. So maybe that 1.1 is pretty close. So, yeah, 0.9. Let's see what we get with the 0.9. Again, these are the twitch moves on the roll. So if I just look at those, now those are overshooting just a little bit. So you can see that in the twitches, now that one undershot, this one overshot. And that 1.1 is probably where it does need to be. I do have a little bit of overshoot right on the edge there. So I think, you know, the 1.1 versus the 0.9, the 0.9 was just a total guess uh, based on what I generally see from quads like this. Let me look. You can see a little bit here too. I mean, that's just it kind of going off course throughout the roll. Let me look at the pitch access here specifically. Again, pitch, I'm seeing some overshooting here as well. I think he's kind of on it with the 1.1. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust there a little bit. We'll go to a one just to push it a little bit. And uh, let's, now this 60 is a little, that's a little aggressive. Generally a five inch quad, you can maybe get him up into the 50s. So let's go, uh, yeah, let's go 51, 55 here. Uh, so let's go uh, one point, 
seven. I kind of just look at and have a sense for these gain values. So generally a five inch, if you have low noise and stuff like that, you can get into the 40s and 50s. If it's a mess, then you know maybe you can't get that high. And we're gonna look for some trilling oscillation from this thing. All right, so with these settings, let's, uh, let's take it out and see what we get. Okay, did I lose you yet? Let's try to break it down real simple. When you're tuning a quad, you're gonna do it in this order. You're gonna first get your filter squared away to reduce those kind of as much as you can because that reduces delay from the gyro to into the PID loop and the raw signal gets filtered and that filtering adds delay and you wanna take as much of that out as you can. This quad is doing really good, as I mentioned just there in noise performance. So we can get pretty aggressive with those filters. So you wanna get that kind of hashed out at least 90% at this point. Then the next thing you want to do is get this P to D balance kind of squared away. And you can see, like we talked about, it's going to be a 0.9 to a 1.1, somewhere in that range. It's not all that touchy. Honestly, you might not know, notice that much difference between the two. So that is this slider right here. So we're anywhere between the, the 0.9 and the 1.1. I just settled on 1.0. The next thing after that, it's really that locks this P to D ratio here, this, this balance between these two terms. So the next thing you can do is you can move both of these terms up and down. So it's gonna move the P and the D up and down. And that's what this slider does, this P and D gain slider. And you can see these terms right here getting moved up and down with the slider. This is why we have the sliders, because really you should be locking in these ratios between these terms and then moving them all, keeping the ratio in between them. So again, I'm moving this slider up and we're gonna land at around 1.7 for now. We're actually gonna push that a little higher here in a second. Finally, the reason I had the feed forward or the stick response down all the way as far as I can is so I have a nice clean determination between this PDD balance. Feed forward and P term are the two primary terms that push a quad into the move. Feed forward pushes with stick response, P term pushes with error. Um, so not getting into too much detail, I'm trying to take feed forward out of the mix so I can really hone in on this balance between the two, which is this slider in here. From there, we're gonna move these two terms up together until we start to hear this D-term oscillation or trilling oscillation, and then you can slide it back down some. And that is really like 95% of the tune. It's get your filter as low as you can, get your PD balance at least squared in within reason, and then try to move up your P and D gain slider. That's kind of it. That will get you 95% of the way there towards a good custom tune. Engines armed. I don't hear anything. Yeah, damn you. I was hoping you'd oscillate and trill a little bit. Now yeah, we put the goggles down here and see what we get. Engines disarmed. Engines armed. Still good at prop wash handling. Right, let's see if we can get a split S. Throttles, throttles look like. And we're also listening for the full throttle, you know, whine. What's it sound like? They're getting up to full throttle. Right, let's do some. Let's do some uh, step moves here. Of course, don't still don't see any bounce back. It's all looking pretty good. Got some step moves there we can take a look at. 
prop wash is still looking sharp to me. I didn't see any in the HD or in the DVR. There was probably a little. There's probably a little. That was pretty good. And again, we're trying to induce it here. All right, well, this pack is still good, but I'm got all I need there. Let's take another look here and see what we got. Ooh, let's look at smooth forward flight. Let's do a look-see on that quick. I'm sure it's good. Ooh. Or is that yawn? Maybe it's just a yaw and put thing. I'll have to look at the stick up the overlays there. Yeah, it's definitely moving. Maybe uh maybe my stick centering cold weather and whatnot, but definitely drifted a little bit there. And there's not really any wind, so. Engines disarmed. Whew, would you look at the time? It's about 20 minutes in. So to wrap this up, the next changes I made were basically just moving that P and D gain slider up a little bit more. I kept moving it up. I did get to a trilling oscillation point and then just back that down. It seemed like around 57, 56 was a reasonable. You know, you don't want to be like way on the cusp of that trilling oscillation. You'll hear it like a like a fluttery sound as soon as you start to arm or start to get up into the into the higher ends of the throttle. So then you just bring the, the slider back down here a little bit. You'll have excellent prop wash if you're right on that edge. But, um, you know, it's, it's just really a preferential thing. You wanna be close to the edge, but not right on the edge. From there, just looking at the logs, I really wanted to give this back with a really nice, crisp, sharp stick response. So I just crank this all the way up. I think sometimes people don't take advantage of the stick response slider. You know, you're thinking little bits of feed forward really make a difference and they don't. It has a really wide range, just kind of like I term. So don't feel you know afraid to really take that slider all the way to the top. And that can get the quads so as soon as you're moving your sticks, that quad is reacting and trying to stay right on your rates. A lot of times with high feed forward amounts, people think it's a little too twitchy at center stick. If you haven't done already, I definitely recommend checking out Betaflight's new actual rates and set your stick sensitivity to 10, put in whatever rotational rate you really want if you're more a thousand degrees per second 800 600 whatever your is your fancy and just check that out i really like that um and i think it's a good complement with feed forward really high so you know i had a nice soft stick response at the center nice and mushy however when i do a quick move quads on it and it has high feed forward mounts it's really pushing it. it's really snappy so any of those scene avoid scenarios going through the woods or whatnot and you have to do some quick twitch corrections you know the quads really moving as quickly as it can for you with the high feed forward but with that we're going to wrap it up there was a couple more other little really advanced kind of settings with feed forward boost D-Term Expo, and I made one little more tweak to the filters, and I can go on to the rationale for why I did that. So if you're interested in that and feeling a little generous, you know, do check out the Patreon, links below. Thanks everybody, I hope this helped. If you have any questions, I always try to respond to uh, comments down below, so please let them down, and if I can help you out, I definitely would. I appreciate your time, I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>